We're going to go to math.com, work in some calculus problems. We're down here at the concavity and the second derivative test. We're doing 10 dash, 10 dash 2. Looks like it says find the concavity. We have f of x equal to negative 1 over x plus 7 squared. So as you can see by looking at this graph, right, it looks like it's concave down to some number here on the x-axis and then concave down again. That's what it looks like, but you know what? This is just a small snapshot of a very large graph, believe it or not. In fact, it's so large, it's infinitely large. The graph to f of x, but we're just seeing the interesting stuff around the origin. It's always interesting around the origin. All right, so let's go ahead and write this down. Let's see if I can remember this. It's a negative x plus 7 squared. Hmm. x plus 7 squared. So we have f of x is equal to negative 1 over x plus 7 squared. Okay. Let's make sure. Yep, that's it. I hate to have to work on something that wasn't the problem. Okay, so since there's a constant up here in the numerator, we're going to rewrite this. Let's bring the denominator up into the numerator. And that means that the sign of the exponent changes. Okay. Now we can take the derivative. We have f prime of x, and so that's going to be a negative 2 x plus 7 raised to the negative 3. And of course, take the derivative of the inside, bring it out, but the derivative of x is just 1, right? Of course, derivative of 7 is 0, so there you go. Now we'll find the second derivative by taking the derivative of the derivative. The derivative, what? Find the second derivative by taking the derivative of the derivative. Yeah, that makes sense. Negative 3 times negative 2 is 6. x plus 7. Subtracting 1, you get negative 4. And then, of course, the derivative of the inside, bring it out, is just 1. Well, there you go. Now, what we'll want to do next here is go ahead and write this with positive exponents. And uh, I'm sitting here looking what happened to the negative. It got more. Uh, okay, yeah. I don't know. I'm losing my mind all of a sudden. You know, I was going to redo this video, but <clears throat> I've decided not to. So you've probably seen this. I'm like sitting here going, something's fishy with the negatives here. Uh, this should have been the negative. I left the negative off, it looks like. Okay, no big deal. We can fix this. So <clears throat> then we take the negative 2, we bring it out front, and negative 2 times a negative is a positive 2. Okay, a positive 2. Now we take the derivative of, uh, of this guy, negative, we get negative 6. I knew there was something going on here and I couldn't figure it out. All right, but I actually figured it out. So there it is. Okay. All right, we set this thing equal to 0. You might have caught that immediately and are like, oh, wait, what are you doing? Uh, this actually should be raised to the fourth power. So we have x plus 7. You know, it's easy to make those kind of mistakes, let me tell you. All right, so as you can see, no matter what we plug in the denominator, this thing's going to always be negative, but we need to get to that point first. Well, as you can see, there's no solution to this, but we do have to look at the denominator. And what makes the denominator 0? That's important. And that's going to be that negative 7 right there because there's a vertical asymptote at negative 7, so we've got to use it. Now, let's use uh, negative 8 as a test point, and I always use 0, right? 0 is easy to deal with. 
All right, so what we'll want to do now is go f double prime of negative 8. And like I said, we don't care what that number is, just if it's negative or positive. Let's take negative 8, plug it in. Well, we know that this is going to always be a positive number down here, no matter what you plug in for x. But we have this negative out here, so negative, right? Negative no matter what. So this is going to be a negative number. We know that's concave down up to negative 7. And then we do f double prime of 0. Plug 0 in, and obviously we get negative again. All right. So that's a negative number also. So we end up with, I'm like, where should I write this? I'll write it right here. Concave down from negative infinity to negative 7 union from negative 7 to infinity, right? Of course, we can't, cannot include negative 7. Okay, so there you go. Let's go over and course we can look at this right we got concave down concave down one two three four five six seven that looks about where that vertical asymptote is okay let's make sure the script is good concave down looks good all right so you can come on over to go to math practice this stuff and maybe we'll meet up all right